Before I let others start and actually sing you something, I might just say what I often say at the beginning of an afternoon like this, and you may have heard me say this before. Uh, and that is that I am a singer, I'm not a singing teacher. So for those of you who are looking for uh, specific technical advice from me, it may well be that you don't get any at all. I, I wouldn't really presume to meddle with an ongoing process that you have with your teacher um, on half an hour's listening. Uh, I don't feel myself to be particularly qualified. So, how, so however, if I do start tinkering amongst, uh, underneath the bonnets, so you'll realise that there must be something really badly wrong. Um, so that's what, <laughs> that's what I'm not. And what I very much enjoy doing is, is the coaching side of things, the thing to people and, and what they sing and how they sing it. And it strikes me more and more that students come to places like this to learn how to sing, and that my task, more than anything, is to examine why you are singing. That's, that's my goal this afternoon. And, and to give you a chance outside of your lesson and in front of an audience to play. So that's my stall, and that's hopefully what we'll examine this afternoon. Great. On we go with whoever's first. Um, this is Dear Doppelganger uh, by Schubert. And in this uh, lead, we see a man. It's still at night. He's in narrow streets. And he sees a house which was once lived in by his sweetheart. And he looks a little closer. And he sees a man. And off the moon's light, he looks a bit closer, further still, and he sees that the man is actually him himself. And he asks why he feels this torture.
Thank you, Harry. Terrific. Uh, voices in great shape there. Um, can I just ask you first off, basic tempo that Joe sold you at the beginning, what yeah. was your reaction? I think that I like it, but I need to stick with it. Because I know I don't stick with slow tempo. And that's what I've been trying to do. Uh, had you had a chance with Joe to work at this or discuss the tempo beforehand? A Much. Couple. A couple of times, because then in a song like this and many others, any song where you have a, an introduction of this sort, the pianist begins, gives you the tempo, and then in your first bar, the messages that you communicate back to him are, yes, that was a great tempo, but actually I'd like to sing it at a different one, and here we go. And he, of course, will respond immediately to that. Yeah. And I heard in your first bar or two, sorry, I want this much slower. So here I go, and Joe would have thought, oh, okay. okay. And then he sent some more signals. Actually, no, uh, your tempo was fine. Uh, let, let's keep with yours. And then, and then, so there's a, there's a resting match, and it just confuses him a little, to the point then that when he has his postlude, okay. he's able to revert back to what he sold you at the beginning. Uh, uh, when I hear the first four bars of this piece, I tend to, hit, to think quavers. And I can only do that, of course, from the second bar. First chord goes down. Yeah. And who knows where we are? And I'm going, hmm, one, two, three. So as soon as I hear the second bar from Joe, from the pianist, then I can calibrate where I am and work out whether I was fast or slow than I thought. And from the second bar to the third bar, and then from the third bar to the fourth bar, I can work out exactly where the quavers are. Yeah. So that I, then I can come in in time. And the thing about in time, singing in tempo, th there's so little going on in the piano part. It's not as if you might think tempo is a particularly important thing. You'll be together. But actually, I think that a lot of the tension from this song comes from the immovable bell toll, tam-tam, of the piano part. Yeah. And the fact that once he starts it up, it just doesn't stop. You, you have to sort of join the ride. If I may, I'd like to do something I've never done before in, a, in a, th something like this, which is walk out. No, no, it, which, is, uh, <laughs> which is use my mobile phone. Um, I'd made sure I'd switch to silent. Uh, I have observed in the past, quite recently in fact, that one thing that singers very rarely do, that instrumentalists do all the time, is practice to a metronome. And I don't think it's particularly useful, it, 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 especially useful for singers, because the text gets in the way so often. Yeah. But it means that singers as, as a race are known to be hugely um, unmusical. <laughs> <laughs> Amorphous. <laughs> you know, uh, we, you're either a musician or a singer, you know the old joke. So, uh, <laughs> let me just get, get... How much do I put this to? Maybe quavers, so if I... Oh, yeah. And that beats in it. Uh, do like, like that. Sorry, I'm just answering an email, so I'll be back with you in a second. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can hear that. Let me just turn it up a bit. Two, two, three. That's too slow, isn't it? If that's quavers, G, 
One, two, three. Now let me just adjust it a bit faster then, and then when I hit something that you think you can sing to, a bit slower than that, a lot faster than that. How are we doing? In ballpark? Yeah. Okay, this is an experiment. You don't need to, this is, I'm not going to take a measure of this. It's just something to play with now. So, can we start from the very beginning? See how weird it is? Yeah. Because you're thinking, obviously, this is this is this is unmusical. This is uh, this is nothing to do with poetry. There's nothing to do with Schubert. Yeah. I'm just seeing if you can go. Mm. And do you want me to readjust that? Is that too fast now? Uh, no, I, I can do it. It's just because. The weird thing, yeah, absolutely. The weird thing about this song is when you hear those first four bars, it sounds like an eternity. You think, God, I'm never going to breathe that. And then you come in about a third slower. Maybe move you on that. Do you mind? Well, I was listening to the quavers, not the church. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. But anyway. Do you, uh, go again? Yeah. <laughs> you get all four bars. Careful not to hurry as well around the turns. Zelben is, is that, that's tricky because the turn it, it, to do that in time is is a thing, but it's possible. Yeah. So, if I switch that off yeah. and ask you maybe maybe even just two bars in, that if I switch that off and now you have that same discipline of that yeah. pulling you through the song, yeah. then the thing becomes taught. In a very different way. Okay. Let me just, just, just two bars in, but it'll be up to it, please. <laughs> Okay, let me just press pause there for a second. So you realise, particularly in this language, because it's so expressive on consonants, is that in order to be on time, you need to set a long... Yeah, you've just done it. Set the consonant up early. Yeah. And in fact, as soon as the first... You've got a crotchet rest. Two beats, two little of those quaver ticks. Um, and then as the first piano chord goes down in the bar in which you sing, boom, you've got as much time as you wish. Chum. And that N of Nacht, although it's going to be there, can also be quite quick so you can get through to the vowel. Yeah. And then you've got all the time when you want to go at the end, yeah. such that Es Ruhen die Gassen. You will be aware where you're going to need to 
preempt some of the most expressive consonants, yes. and we're going to be quick on others. Weirdly, with the metronome off, I still hear it tick. Can you? Yeah, I know you mean, yeah. And there's something inviolable about that. Something, there's something horrifyingly menacing about that tick yeah. that drives you through the song. Even as you hit some of the terms, and it's left hanging in the air, boom, and on it goes again. Now, this, this slow tension, one of those old chest expands used to have in the 19 whatevers, you pull slowly apart. That tension that runs through the entire song, yeah. you do not mess with that thought. Do not mess with it until the accelerando, yeah. where you get a chance um, uh, when you sing their doppel going up. And here the gain is to leave the accelerando as long as possible. Accelerando often to musicians means it's fast now, but it of course means getting it's faster. Getting faster. Yeah. Exactly. So the longer you can hold back, do doppelganger. Between the two of you, play the game of when you're going to put the next chord down. How fast is it yet? Du gleicher Geselle. But, and then you get the chance to really go for it. Uh, depending on where you feel. Mich gefällt diese Stelle. Joe puts on crash. So, there's no indication of where the accelerando stops. Yes. And then it goes back to that tempo. Great. The only thing is that off that climactic chord that he puts down, which I notice is triple forte here, boom, to zo. If you leave zo too long, tick, 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 zo. The, the whole thing can, like a, like a souffle, can just suddenly go like that. Okay. And you sign me zo manche Nacht. In, as an exaggeration there, yeah. but that chest expander, you stretch to its maximum point. You, if you let it go, it'll just, the thing will just um, spring all over the floor. Like a nacht in die. And I seem to remember, in al, al, alter Zeit, his chord is piano at that point. From triple forty to piano on alter. I would... I would say, I'm pinch trying. yeah, 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 no, 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 no. no. I'm sorry, pinch of salt here. I think it, I would say, I would say, if you allow yourself to be still quite forceful at the beginning of alta and diminuendo through pain, okay. if that's possible, yeah. that you can end at sight at the right moment. And and don't forget that that sight is not the end of the song. In fact, what you do is you start him off again on that round of come. Okay. Oh, that's to there. So, uh, what I actually would love to do is go back to the beginning one more time, if I may. I'll let, let you run as fast as I, far as I can. And here's the thought I want you, you to have now. What about doing absolutely nothing, yeah. at least in the first page of this song? Yeah. You, you said about this chat that you've, you've, you've noticed. Stop! You said about this chat that you've noticed um, at the street. You think, when do you know? who this guy is. We all know the audience. We, we know this song, and it's the famous one, so we all know what's going to happen. But you as a singer, you're in the moment. You don't know. It's, it's like an out-of-body dream experience where you find yourself in the streets. You don't have any corporeal self. You're, you're just drifting in the dark. And you find, oh, I know this town. Yeah. I know this street, and I know that window. And, and there's this guy. Who is he? When do you work out? When does the camera pan round? To see his face. And if you're computing that, if it's later, later, yes, then what is so portentous about just being in that street? What, the, the music's saying gothic horror, but, but you don't need to telegraph that yourself. You could just be, oh, I'm having this dream and, and I'm here. Oh, there's the house there. Yeah. Like that, oh, yeah, that's the house there. Oh, right. So, what about trying to do as little as is humanly possible in the first page so that when you get to the bits that really tear at you, 
you throw all your toys out of the pram. Okay. Okay? J just try again. in the middle of that that's just great sorry time to go back to sc score a second to check one thing yeah how many bar how many beats are on that bar oh, i think it's an extra beat put an extra beat in there just so did I, did I put an extra beat in there? yeah i think so just on top of schmerzens when the second chord goes down the middle of it for Schmerzen's Gewalt. Yeah. Is, is that feel, feel right? Yeah, I and, think I did that. You, and it's only then because it, it, it's that tension I'm talking about that, that winds up. That, that gets it. We'll, we'll go back to there. In fact, how, how about from uh, the bottom of the previous page, Das steht auch ein Mensch. And I'm beginning to riff a bit again on what I'm saying to you about doing nothing. What it is, is that when you sang the song, first of all, very successfully and lovely, as soon as you finished it, you, you became Harry again. And, and, and I use sessions like this to ask myself the question of when, you know, when I'm performing as well, ask myself the question, how natural can you actually be in a recital? So obviously, uh, this doppelganger experience that you're singing about is unusual, yeah. which is why you're singing about it in the first place. But nonetheless, it's still you. And as you stand there now, just looking at me, I see Harry. I see someone who's relaxed. You look, you, you know, you look relaxed. You've, you're, you're in a strong position, but you're, yeah. you, you are you. <laughs> and what I'm most interested in, in is seeing how little artifice we can all put on top of that when we're singing songs. Yeah. So when I'm saying try and do as little as possible, if you were able, I wish I could video you now, well, you'll see later on. If I, could, if, if I could get you to sing like that, like Harry, with little, with no sort of, need a face. <laughs> uh, this is the doppelganger, this is the famous one, it's the spooky one. Yeah. So you have to sing it with a spooky face. Well, my question is, do you? And did I, last time I sang this, I wonder if I used my spooky face. I don't know. <laughs> but I would like to think that on the inside, in the moment, I am just singing to you about this moment in this street, as naturally as I'm talking to you now. Da steht auch ein Mensch, stark in die Höhe, und ringt die Hände. You know, I mean, it's occurring to me, why is he standing there ringing his hands? But before then, I, I, if you know the answer, then we see it on your face. 
da steht auch ein Mensch und starten. And, and the music is kind of giving us, uh, us that information yeah. already, so you don't need to do it too. Okay. So what if you just, so da steht auch ein Mensch, from there, yeah. and just let it occur to you naturally, as simply as you can, this is an ongoing investigation in, into how natural you can be. Okay. And when it, as I say, when it hits you, then you come for us. I'm so sorry, would you mind? I just have to, just have, because I pressed the time slightly here, but, but so sorry there. Uh, yes, um, I've meddled with the way you, you structure the end of that song, so you're yeah. going to have to go and find it again, because yeah, yeah. I, I, that wasn't what you wanted to do. So have a little look yeah. at how you um, get around that final turn. Um, and let it, you can experiment with letting it get personal on or doppelganger. Yeah. There's something, what is it? What is it? Um, in recognizing this guy, recognizing it's you, he's, he's got you again. I get the feeling this is a dream you've had more than once and will have again. Yeah. Uh, each time you turn up here, and each time, the, 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 it's just you try to peer around to see his face. And you think, oh, please don't let it be this time. And you, each time you look, and you, and you say, what are you doing there? Yeah. Why are you doing this to me? Why are you aping what, you know, yeah. what, what's it all about? So there's a certain, if, if you are catatonic to begin with, or indeed just natural, look what I'm trying to find here. If you do that for the first three quarters of the song, it l gives you a permission to become wild in the last few phrases there. And you get a chance to, to uh, if you so wish, to uh, impose on the audience that they become you, they become the doppelganger, and you can ask them personally, what are you doing? You get a chance to get personal. I mean, that's something to experiment with. Yeah. I'd love, to, I'd just I'd love to spend the rest of the afternoon on this one song, but I have to let it go. That's but right. that's terrific. Thank Great job, Harry. Thank you. Thank you. Can I choose one? Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Yep. Um, the Schubert, Young and Old. Lovely.
Again, very beautiful. Uh, this is uh, it, it, what I want to deal with this afternoon. Not the how, but the why. Because it strikes me you sing that very beautifully. Very beautiful indeed. You, you've, uh, in fact, what I get most from that performance, to be honest, as a, as a coach like this, is the fact that you've dealt with it, you've sorted it out, you've got German in, in good place, and it's the, the motor's running. Okay? So it's great. And what I'd love to do is see if we can examine a way to find a, an emotional attachment. Yes. Because that I, that I get less. Okay. Um, uh, again, part of, 
part, same for me when, when I sing. I, 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 I try and be in the present. I try and find my journey through these songs. I try and find the first attachment. And then I sing it. And the question is, because I don't see myself from the outside, is to what extent are the emotions within me being portrayed on my face? Mm. Or, which, is, which is what we've got. I try not to do too much. And you were very still, uh, and, and, and Harry before you very still. So basically, it is with this television screen part here that we do the communicating, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering how much tra actually transmits. And this is you know, part of the game we play. So what I'd love to do, if we reset the top, you're not going to sing. In fact, we're going to sit down in a second. You're not going to sing. But I just want to spend the opening piano introduction just to see what you do with your face. Let's just run from the top, if you would, please. And then when she gets to the first bar, just come to a cadence and stop, please. Okay. Okay, so th this is a trick I pull often, so excuse me if you've seen this before. Can I ask the audience now, who had eye contact with her? Could you put your hands up if she looked at you during the course of that? She caught you, sir. You related to her by any chance? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, given a chance to work the room, as I call it, you, you, I thought your eye line was to the exit and beyond. Yes, that's fair? <laughs> okay. So, so... We as an audience, uh, in order to bond with you as a singer on stage, we've got to work very hard to try and say, hello, hello, <laughs> no, hello, yeah, okay? So you have a chance. Now, let's try that same thing again. And all I'm going to ask you to do now is to catch the eye of everybody in the room. This is, this is a simple game, everybody. This is nothing to do with the song. Uh, to catch the eye of everybody in the room as simply as you can. I don't want you to, to communicate anything in particular. So, I'm a young nun and I'm rather worried. Because again, <laughs> the piano is going to do all that for you. So if you can imagine what it would be to give your, your most amiable but blank, almost expressionless face, but to catch everybody's eye in the room. Okay? Can we go again, please? Great. Did she miss anyone? Did she catch you all? Yeah, everybody. Do you feel connected to her now before she starts singing? It, it's such a simple thing. But so, and what did you feel? Yeah, it was, it was kind of, yeah, just, just it was a nice way to set up because then you, you see who's there, what's there, and you're sort of what you're dealing with. Yeah, <laughs> yes, like, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. It's expand, it's sort of, it's quite easy, I think, when you sing to focus on, for me, to focus on one area. Yeah. The room obviously feels a lot bigger or seems to be bigger than it feels. Yes. Yeah, yes, and I understand all, I remember all of that, absolutely, from, from performances. I think, oh, she's smiling over there, let's sing to her. <laughs> you know, that, that's great, okay? So you include the whole room. We have a connection straight away with, you, with your audience. Now, I don't know how you felt about expressionless, but with that music, I saw on your face a profound sadness that wasn't... Um, it wasn't layered on, you're not giving me, again, leader, sad face. I didn't see that. But I saw something that was honestly and basically uh, vulnerable, to which I, as an audience member, warm instantly. And you haven't sung a note yet. Okay? So just r remember and use that. Always remembering that there are some songs where that works and is appropriate. There are other songs that, where it isn't. The doppelganger, for example, the previous one, to catch everybody's eye in the opening four bars and work the room, would be less useful. Okay, so anyway, this, it, right, that game done. So now, if I can, are these attached? May I, sorry, just, for, for that. just park a second, because that may well be the singing for now. <laughs> okay, so 
rather than necessarily describing line for line what the song is about, just tell me about the song. In so um, it starts sort of in, it's talking about this storm and uh, you know it's roaring through the treetops and um, shaking the house and the thunder lightning. And then she says, you know, that's that's basically how life was for me. You know, life was you know all these emotions were flying and you know I was trembling like a house and you know, love was like the lightning. Um, and then basically she has, it, it's like a sort of little bit opera. Mm -hmm. Then she has, you hear it in the, um, in the piano, she sort of has an epiphany or a spiritual awakening. And suddenly the storm's, you know, not scary anymore. It doesn't have that power over her. And she says, you know, rage on, you know, it, it doesn't matter in my heart, there's still peace and there's calm. Um, and, you know, I, I'm with God now. I, I wait for God like a bridegroom waits for a loving bride. I'm drawn, I hear the sound of the bell, and, and I'm drawn to these heavenly heights full of her solace. Great, okay, so uh, the map is, in a nutshell, sort of five words, storm, <laughs> outside, mm -hmm. inner peace, yes. solace, bell, heaven. Yes? yes? Is that, yes. that uh, roughly speaking? Yes. Okay, so you're aware of that. You're going you're gonna to build the song around that shape. All right, are you a person of faith? Uh, yes. This is handy because it means that you can just go straight to the core there and, and you can use that and i say use use is a terrible word it sounds you know like you're gonna oh great I'm a, i i can use my faith for this Boom. i don't <laughs> i don't mean that i just mean in, in getting a connection if you're not a person of faith then you have to imagine but this is something yeah. that, that's a bit easier for you to access yeah. okay so that's useful bank that um so let's look for subtext then storms and what could this actually Let's cut to the quick. What's this really about? So I think it's, I think it's someone who's been sort of very, you know, in, in love and maybe had these, these awful ups and downs with, with you know, love life. I think that's, that's ultimately what it's about, sort of relationships and, and these, these horrible highs and horrible lows when it's all just got too much. You can't deal with it anymore. And that's, you know, she goes to God and that, that's that constant in her life that, that is always the same, there's no sort of ups and downs. So there's a contrast between a sort of romantic relationship and then mm -hmm. a, a relationship with God. Yes. Okay, so in a nutshell then on my whiteboard, I've got storm. The storm we wrote up at the top and circled it in red, whatever. That now says storm equals raging torrents of love. Yes. Is that okay? Yes. yes. <laughs> so the, then we can deal in metaphors as well. So those storms that you built on the out, that were at the beginning of the song that were frightening you so much, yes. could also stand for, as you say, yes. uh, the torments you had before. Okay, now it's, uh, and therefore solace comes from the comfort you get from that. I love your idea of, of, of God, the idea of God being something constant, I suppose, something that, that varied. Um, the storms frightened you? Yes. Okay, yeah. now let's get specific. This is just imagination, no right or wrong answers. How old are you? Oh, well, I don't think she's very old. I think she's probably, you know, the same age as me, I'm 23, so, it, you know, it, I think she's experienced a lot in her life, but I also think that it's perhaps affected her a lot more than someone who is older and more emotionally able to, to deal with things. I yeah. Think that makes so the battle scars are quite deep. Yeah, yeah. And you can then riff, if you so wish, let me just keep an eye on the time, make sure I don't go on too much. You can then riff on that, what, I mean, what happened to her? I think maybe she was sort of, I feel that there was a child involved out of wedlock and she was, you know, scorned by family and he left her and, you know, in, especially in, in the time that it was written. Yeah, absolutely. Disaster, yeah. I think. And this is, this is, it, it, all of this sort of background hot seating stuff is, is not, as I said, there's no right or wrong because it's not as if um, someone's going to come up to you after and said, I didn't like that bit about the child. <laughs> you know, it, the, this is stuff we, 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 we deal with ourselves with the, with the background, okay? So, yeah. so the, the storm is something that you can be genuinely fearful of. Yeah. And uh, 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 this, this threat, it's always been that thing that in the past, maybe in the present as well, that your experience will, you know, will, will tell, is that men have always had that testosterone-driven strength that if things go bad in a relationship, they can just get violent. And, and women throughout history, particularly when this is written, they, they have no real defense against that. No. And so if it is that life has dealt them a really duff monopoly card, 
the, what, the only recourse for them is to go where men cannot touch them anymore, which is yeah. into, the, into the convent. Okay, so, so we have the storm as something that is really fearful. Well, let's think about that and work with that in a second. Uh, and then let's deal with the, the solace part of things. Now, for a young 23-year-old who's been so uh, traumatized, if I can go as strong as that, so much so that she decides to turn her back on it and dedicate herself to one thing. Do you think there's any sense in which dedicating herself to God, being a bride of Christ, is in any sense erotic, an erotic sublimation, a sublimation of erotic desires into something? Yeah, I think so. I think it's a focus of every, you know, every section on the emotional scale. I think it's all gone into you know, this, this tonic now. Mm. I think that's why it's so... You know, at the end, it, it is, you know, it seems very calm, but to me, it's not, it's, it's not a full, oh, I, you know, suddenly I'm this pure, holy person. I think it's so good because she's, she's a real, a real human being and, and she's doing this because out of need. Yeah. I think m more than want. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it does have a, a sort of erotic. Uh, that's an interesting thing to, to say because, of course, with my perspective as an outsider, mm -hmm. watching you as a 20 year old woman saying, enough of that, I'm dedicating myself to God, I'm going to enter this convent and shut the door. I see a wasted life. Mm. And, you know, if my daughter came to me and announced, that, Dad, I'm just thinking I'm going to join a convent and we're going to go and, and that's the last I'll see of you. Call me Sister Mary from now on. You know, that, yeah. that would be a huge shock for me. And so it is that you reach the end of the song and you say hallelujah. And for you, you've got salvation. For yeah. us on the outside, we're going, oh. <laughs> You know, yeah. what, a, what a shock that your life has been so bad that you're prepared to take such a, yeah. a bold step. So, again, from your own human existence, I wouldn't wish <laughs> anybody uh, such an experience to, want to make them want to do that. Yeah. But then the, nevertheless, as we all do in song, we just use our imaginations and, it, and see what it would feel like to be in that position whereby that's your only choice. Yeah. And when that choice comes, rather than say, well, okay, I'll take the ticket, I'll be a nun. You say, come and get me. This is it. And you have this sort of beatific moment, the light shines on you, and you go. And you walk willingly, you embrace it. You know the end of Dialogue of the Carmelites, where they all go for the guillotine? Do you, do you know that opera, Poulenc opera? Yeah. Once, you, once you've started with the, with the young nun, it's the inevitable conclusion. And, and they all walk to the scaffold in, in such radiant joy. Yeah. say, yeah. Just, you know, that's my moment, take me. So, yeah. so it is that you go from this intense fear and dealing badly with trauma at the beginning to this moment at the end where you can make this extraordinary step. Yeah. Yeah? Uh -huh. So, I haven't dealt with the bell yet. Yeah. Now, when the bell comes in, what does that ring for you? What does that mean? What, what do you feel? She's only 23, so that her whole rest of her life, that she's got time to realise yeah. her mis if it is a mistake, anyway. Yeah, so I think that that bell, you know, for her at that other very moment is, you know, yes, it's the right decision, this is wonderful, I hear it, you know. But then, you know, for, for me, looking at the song, I think that's the bell, you know, it's, it's the reality, you know, that's not, it's almost ominous. So that bell can insist. Yeah. If, it were to, if it were a different composer, they might put it in once. Oh, there's the bell. When it comes up, oh, there's the bell. Yeah. But the bell keeps coming back. Yeah. Okay. I was about to say that it's, it, that is quite a difficult concept to play out. <laughs> it's quite difficult. <laughs> but, you, but I take that back a little bit because you can use the insistence of the bell, even in your own mind, to have it ring for you and continue ringing. Mm -hmm. So it calls, and, and you have to answer that call. Okay. And finally, Alleluia. Now, where are you here by the time you get to the end? Where are you with that Alleluia? I think, you know, you feel fully spent. Like, that's it. Like, I have, I have nothing more to give or to say about anything. Alleluia. <laughs> like, that's, yeah. that's all I have left. So I think, I think it's... I, I don't think it's a, sort of a, a 
really religious um, sort of plea. I think it's just a complete and done with everything else off. That's yeah. That's all I it's, it's full brach to quote the passions that, that yes. everything is accomplished. Very interesting. Okay. Because you will note, and actually I may have saw this, see this, I may have seen this, I mean to say, when I watched you first. And if you get a chance to look at your back on this, you might see the archetypal Junge Nonna Alleluia face at that moment. It gets its pin, it's triple P. It's as quiet as it gets. We had triple forte, forte in the Doppelganger just a moment ago. Now you have triple P, it's very special, the unusual marking. And as you get to seeing this, it, it's almost as though you were hardly singing at all. And if you, if you sing, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the Junge Nonna, and at this moment, there's a rather beautiful bit. <laughs> we will all go, oh yes, it is a beautiful bit. <laughs> but also, if you manage to find something you've just described, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, then the hairs on the back of our neck go up, and we come away unable to speak as you access something in all of us that's just going to... Oh, oh, okay. So let's try. Let's go back. Let me put the chair back. Let's, um, let's, let's see, because it's, uh, it's a really tricky process here. All it is, as I say this word play, you'll, 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 get, you'll get the wrong just from the, for, for, before you start singing. And then it's a question of um, doing... Actually, remarkably little, because mm. the words, will, the words, and the music will help, and, and you don't even need to express the words too, 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 too strongly. But if you remember fear equals that trauma beforehand, mm. then the hope of salvation, which is double-edged, possibly, but that's actually mm. very bit difficult. Yeah. See how you feel about that, uh -huh. and it, when that bell calls you, see how you feel about that. And then Alleluia at the end. Let's see where we go. Let's go from the top and right on through.
Geschmückt und dem Braut geschmeidt, des Wärters Tochter, die rosige Maid, tritt ein in den Finger des Löwen, der liegt der Herrin zu Füßen, vor der er sich schmiegt.
Well, first off, congratulations. <laughs> it's a major tour de force to get through 
uh, uh, just be comfortable in such a long, uh, long song. That's just simply it. Something you learn and then trot out like that. Most songs are three minutes, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> so it's about five, seven, eight, something like that. <laughs> Terrific. So just, it's, a, it's an achievement, first of all. And now that you've done what you set out to do, which is to come here, get through it, tell the story, and do it well, then from here we can play, yes? yes? So all the study you've done, all the German study, all the vocal study, the working with, with, with Hamish there to make sure that you, know, that you could present something as two people, that's the building block on which you can now just enjoy yourself. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed what you just did as well. Yeah. 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 Is that the first time you've done it in front of an audience? Yeah. Which is great. Got that out of the way, <laughs> isn't it? Because this song, of course, will stand you good, st good stead forever yeah. afterwards, and you will simply build on it. So uh, number one is uh, we've already ticked that. Yeah. So from here. The photocopy I got down there is off your score, yes? Yes, it is. So did you write, or someone write, t let's tell them a story, let's tell a yes, story? Yes, I yeah. did write. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it is, that's something for anybody in the future, is that if you use your own copy and photocopy, all your markings go to us. So, you just <laughs> <laughs> so let's tell the story. Yes. That's all, that's all I want to concentrate on, because the singing of it, you, 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 you really got, you got it sorted. So, mm, mm, no, let's, let's just, do you mind, Hamish, we'll just leave you back there for a bit. You can, so just take a seat again, and let's just chat through. Um, you told us what happens in this, so let me cut to the question I, I asked Rosanna a, a, a second, which is, what's really going on? Let's go for subtext and metaphor. What's, hap what's, what's this song really about? Um, um, what does it stand for? What does the lion <laughs> stand for? I don't really know. I, I thought about this when I first looked at it, and I thought there could be some sort of... Uh, um, I've completely lost it. Uh, that's, yeah, so that's, it could be some moral tale, kind of, you know, don't get into bed with lions type thing. Well, obviously, <laughs> that doesn't quite work. Um, and, uh, I mean... I don't, I don't know, because at the, at the beginning, I, I... And this all came from a one sentence translating it the wrong way and seeing it as uh, uh, as less of a protective thing of uh, the lion protecting her as more as he was protecting himself whereas in fact I kind of see it as he's actually he's understood what she said and she doesn't want to go and she's thinking if she's going to have to go then I'm not, you know we may as well go together um, mm. okay mm. nice okay let me, let me lodge that and sort that for later so um, Given the, what we were saying about the Jung and Non, that the um, storm might represent this and that, you know, all mm -hmm. the things going on here. It, yeah, sure, on the outside, it's perfectly reasonable just to stop at, it's a tale about a young girl and a lion, <laughs> and, she, and, she, and, she, and he eats her, uh, you yeah. know, he mauls her to death, and that's basically it. Uh, but you said about, you know, morals and, and what have you. It, I get the feeling that with, with tales of this sort, yeah. particularly at that time, you know, all the Brothers Grimm stuff, and then, yeah. you know, all, all that sort of stuff. It's about giving messages to young children. Now, you know what will happen if you trust the la, 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 la. Yeah. This will happen, because it happened to young Rumpelstiltskin, no, whatever, yeah. you know. And so if there is a message that you're giving to this, to a, a child who's listening wide-eyed to tell this story, if the message is simply, if you're given the choice to spend any time with a lion in a cage, don't no. do it, okay? <laughs> If that's the simple message, then, <laughs> then it, it's not, not worth an eight-minute song. But let's just delve deeper. Mm. What, what could the lion represent, then, that would be um, a risk for a young lady? Um, any man, pretty much. Hooray! Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, here I am fishing. For, yes, if you, yeah. yeah, any man. So what I said earlier on uh, about, uh, again, in the, it, it, we were riffing just a moment ago on the previous song about the trauma that beset this young woman who had no, el nowhere else to go but to the nunnery. Yeah. Because society was set up in, in a men's favour, uh, still is, I hear someone shout at the back there. So society is set up so, so, so that the woman has no way to turn. Yeah. So the guy can behave as beastly as he likes to her. Yeah. And, uh, all right, so, so it, 
if we, if we play with that for a bit, so she had, so from her childhood, mm -hmm. has had this friend who's been faithful to her, yeah. but it is in his nature, he it has the power at any time to turn on her and rip her throat out. Yeah. But he doesn't, because they're childhood friends, until... Another man gets in the way. That, now you see, if it was, if it was just the other man getting in the way, as soon as he ste she stepped into the cage, the lion would have had her. But the lion doesn't. The lion waits until. What sets the lion off? What is the one thing that sets the lion? He sees the man outside the cage. Mm, I'm still fishing, and I'm not, not quite the answer. I often say to these, there's no right or wrong answer. And I have a feeling, <laughs> at this point, I'm pushing you towards, uh, towards a different answer. There is, she does something. Oh, she kisses him. Sorry. Ah. So that kiss yeah. is the turning point that wakes something up in the lion. Yeah. Yeah? Happy with that? Yeah. And so it is that in some way you could say, if you wish to, she is at fault because she uh, uh, awakens in that kiss a, a, a sexual response, feeling, yeah. a different feeling. We've been like friends, we've been like brother and sister, yeah. until, uh, not wanting to push it any further, until that one kiss suddenly something erupts yeah. and it ends in, 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 in blood. Okay? Yeah. You could say that. And you could say that, that whatever beast it is, you know that old pop song about the, um, the snake, there's a girl and the snake, and, and, and the, 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 you know that one? <laughs> it's a bit further back. The, anyway, it, the whole idea is that the, the, the snake, she tries to pet the snake, and because she, she finds the snake so charming, and the snake bites her, and right. she dies. And the snake says, but you knew I'm a snake. <laughs> you, you always knew I'm, I wasn't anything else, I'm a snake. So it is, a lion is, I'm, I'm a lion, yeah. okay? I'm a beast, we could be friends, yeah. okay? You can, you can pet me and, and, you know, and, and lots of stuff, but I'm still a lion. Yeah. So, great, okay, bank all that. That's gonna, uh, 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 now, how many characters are there in the song that you can develop? Uh, to develop, uh, there's the narrator at the start who's telling the story, uh, there's a long section of her, um, and then there's a lion Great. Four separate characters which you can play with. Yeah. Okay? And the thing about narrators, I would just posit to you, because you might have a chance to do this as well. Narrators is that we all tend to think of narrators are like the BBC um, impartial. <laughs> they just come on and they say, this is what happened, and there was a girl, and then this happened. However, it's fun sometimes to experiment with the narrator having an attitude. Yeah. Both at the beginning and most specifically at the end. And at the end, the reason I say this is because, um, because you end... You don't end on the tonic. No, no. You end upwards. Let us pass. With a sort of, mm -hmm. so, little children. And, and Hamish finishes the thing for you. Yeah. So that says to me, attitude. Okay. Says to me, the narrator's got some sort of attitude. And you can choose whatever that is, but I, uh, to throw one in for the mix, which you can choose and then reject or whatever, there's this sort of playfulness with the audience. I'm going to sing you a song about a lion and a little girl. And we're all going, oh, well, that's going to end in tears. <laughs> and, they, and they go, no, 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 actually, because they're very good friends. Okay, it was all lovely. Yeah, you know where it's going to, so you could yeah. just, just play with them, okay? You know? And then, uh, uh, tell you what, as you sit there, don't, we don't need to sing anything. But Hamish, could you just play us a little bit of the, when he sings, mit der, can you just play us a couple of lines of this is, uh, this is the narrator's music. Yes, yeah, so you don't need, no, need to play the melody, just your accompaniment, please. Okay, so in the mine, it's, it's quite playful. He's just stabbing at you and just letting you get on with telling the story. Now, when the girl first speaks, can you start, just choose a bit when she starts speaking. Can you play your accompaniment when she starts speaking, please? So now that change in colour is a gift for you to start. To start. Let's, let's start designing the girl based on what you've just heard, those bits. And you, you know the story well. You know what it so just uh, describe it for me. Okay. Um, 
So uh, for Tita, I'd also read vulnerable. It's got always handy and stuff like this. Yeah. Okay, brown hair, um, petite, vulnerable. Yeah. Still pretty young. Right, okay, so yes. Very much a teenager. Um, so, pause. So can I just point out, therefore, that uh, uh, it, it would have been different back then. Hmm. But for us now, and that sort of, that sort of day, well, no, actually, it's different now, too. Sorry. Just to say that, therefore, it, it, her sexual history has yet to begin. Yes. And, therefore, so has the lions, if they're the, roughly speaking the same age. Yes. So, that's, I just want to put that in there when you say okay. very young. Okay, keep going. Um, and she, I, I think she's, along with the fact that she's quite young, I think. Ah, that's her world. That's yeah. great. Okay, let me pause there. I'm going to need to ask you to sing in a second because that's really good. Uh, do you have a pet yourself? I do, yeah. What do you have? I have a dog. Great. What sort? A flat coated retriever. Ah, oh, flat coated. It just couldn't to be better because <laughs> because the coat yeah. will have a touch yeah. that you know. Yeah. So the lion, if you imagine the lion. Uh, you know, I've never been that close to a lion, <laughs> but I'm going to imagine what it's like. But I have been close to my own dog, and you know your dog, you know that. So when she's the girly girl partner, that's terrific. The girly girl partner, when she's close to him and saying this stuff, whispering right in his ears, he's there. And she's whispering into it, and she can feel what it's like to be next to him. And that comfort she gets that they've always had since they were children. Yes. yes. Right, let me whip the chair from out, to, from out from under you. That point you just got to there, where she starts singing. Let's see, let's hear that girly girl, please. Okay, I think I can help with just one word, and it's the word that we use so often smile. Ah. You see that smile you got there? Because at the moment you were, you, I mean, I know the message she's got for him is, yeah, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to leave. And, yeah. you know, I don't want to do this by her. I know that's happened. But the initial thing is that she, the first moment she gets into the cage with him and touches him and says, oh, yeah. yeah. And I say that because, the, can you just play that again? That, what, just what you played. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Whereas if it was in the minor, I would be thinking, just play it, yeah? You think, I've got a very bad message to give you. <laughs> and, and I'm feeling really bad about it, yes. And off we go, you play it, you see? Okay, reset, same place, into the major as, as, as written. And, and give us that girl as she touches the, the coat and, and just thinks, this is the one place I want to be in the world, the one companion yeah. I have in the world. Off you go, and smile. Okay, just hang on a second. We could, this is again just experimental. You, 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 you will of course find this. I, 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 I'm not going to have time to go through all the characters with you, unfortunately, which is, which is a real shame, because we could, we could just play with how you sing the husband. When he comes and says, hey, get me a gun. I need to put this thing down. You, know, you, can, you can give him such attitude in the way you sing him. Yeah. And also there's a tremendous amount you can play with with the narrator, as I said, particularly the way it ends. And then there's also um, the lion itself. W play, think about that. Let's just deal with the girl for, for now. Let's get personal. This is again the same trick that I was pulling with Rosanna. Rosanna? Rosanna. Um, just in terms of using your audience and, and, uh, and not being afraid to eyeball them. So, for this moment, sort of phrase by phrase, pick a person rather than a, an area, a person, and project the lion onto them and absolutely bond with them as though they were uh, person person you, you pick some I've got this chap over here pick him looking at him for a bit and absolutely bond with him for a bit and then find someone else and eyeball to eyeball bond with them as being the the, the most faithful pet I ever had and my one true friend go for go for them person to person same place please
And just pause a second, right? This is good. I'll ask you to reset and do that again. You see, you are already getting better and better at it. Don't lose tempo. Because okay. just because it because I can hear Hamish, Hamish yeah. saying, that's getting slower and slower. <laughs> okay, so just let it roll out. Yeah. This is terrific. More. Okay. In that each person that you laser beam, if I can use that as a verb briefly, each person that you laser beam should get this glow of love and warmth off you. Uh, and just go, oh, oh my goodness, he's saying he's saying to me. Oh my and, 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 and love. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I'm going to pause you there. You're going to do the same, same section. You're going to work this side of the room. And now, just play. What would it be like if you sang like a girl? I'm not suggesting like a countenance, like not the octave, but just... Um, you said to me, girly girl. Yeah. And I'm getting a, a lovely young guy. <laughs> yeah. So you just got to play. It's just going to play. See what it'd be like. And so it will be when women sing songs that have got guys in them, then they're going to have the butch up and just, you know, whatever. Just, <laughs> just, just to a certain extent, just to, just to play. You'll know when it's too much, you yeah. know, when it's macabre. But, but see, same bit, work different people, off you go. <laughs> That's, that's, I'm going to pause you there. That, that is absolutely great. We, I'm getting a picture from you. Much more. Yeah. And now, all three singers today have been very, very specific about their text. Almost as if someone has said, that Roderick Williams, you know, he likes text. Well, it's almost not. You know. But actually, all three of you, I feel, can play with the, your emotional response more because the text is so good, you can just let it go a little bit. Mm. Having said that, if you can enjoy... We were in those, those glorious days of, of, of old. Now, you're really getting pe to people, and I, and I love what you're doing with them. Just add to that a resonance in your mind of what those days were like. Yeah. Which are gone, which you say, Und hatten uns lieb und hatten uns gern. It was, you know, t t just, it was a rosy childhood. Yeah. Uh, die Tage der Kindheit. This is a particularly good word. Kindheit. Uh, sie, liegen uns, sie liegen uns fern. Yeah. This is <laughs> vollbracht as I take the second time today. Die Tage des Kindes. The words that shine really just ha hang on to and let them, let them glisten. Do you understand that? Yeah. Can, can you see what, which ones you can pick out? Yeah. Uh, Kintai is one, but you might find other on the way that just give you that... Ah. Same phrase, just those few bars, and then I'll, I'll have, to, have to stop, move on. But. And 
I'm just going to have to leap in there because I'm running, I ha have run out of time, in fact, but I will say, that's great. Now, you're getting a feeling for this person. You think, oh, okay, so she could sing like this and then I could shape her like this and then that brown hair becomes real brown hair. The, 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 the fur on the lion which you've got with, the, with, 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 with your own dog, you, you begin to become more specific about that. Yes. And then on top of that, you can throw all sorts of details. I would, if I had another half hour with you, we'd, we'd investigate the yes. moment of the kiss and how you sing that and, and, and to what extent she wishes that lion were a boy. Mm. You could play around with that. What extent this is a, this is a, 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 a beginning of something um, um, forbidden and erotic or whether you want to go that far, oh, you know, uh, Freud and the la 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 la. How far you want to go with that? And then you can work out how the lion responds to that. Yes. And at each turn, all of us, we ask ourselves the question, what are the audience, what are the audience expecting? What have they seen a hundred times already whenever they've seen this performed? The archetypal lion face. <laughs> and then, you know all the stuff, and people, and people laugh, but actually it's what we see every time. So you think, well, what happens if I did something different? The experiment. What happens if the narrator is actually quite naughty, quite wicked in his, you know, you, you have that thing where the bullet comes at the end. And you, and you see, so there you are, you see, ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's happened. But what happens if you absolutely string them along yeah. and throw the bullet in their face? There you go. It, it, the warmer you were with that girl, the more we bond with you, the more sickening it is when at the end of the song you throw us away. There you go. And then, then, then he ate her. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, and, and that's a game you can play. Every time you perform this, you might do it slightly differently and characterize them slightly differently. But that's where the fun yeah. comes from it. Yeah? Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I'm going to stop oh, you there. Please. Sorry. This is fantastic. Don't tell us. Yes. Right. Okay.
lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, oh, yes, 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 indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just missed that one coming. <laughs> we get it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, could you put up your hand? This is, ask the audience. Could you put up your hand if you knew that song before? Uh, that's quite a lot of people. So, if you didn't know that song before, you're allowed to answer the question, did you follow it? Put up your hands if you followed the story. You didn't know that song before, but you followed the story. Yeah. Okay, just a few. And, lovely. if you didn't put up your hand, the hand now because you didn't know it and you didn't follow the story, could you put up your hand if English is not your first language? Okay. Now, I say this because that is a complex poem. You know that there are a handful of words. We'll deal with the oh, words yeah. that are not uh, common usage. Checklist Griff. Checklist Griff is, uh, <laughs> is the album title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we'll deal with that in a second. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss how to try and sell those. So there's a, a smash of people who are just, uh, yeah. But nonetheless, in a song like that, which has a fairly basic and simple narrative, mm. yes, fair enough? Yeah. I would be hoping you to, for you to get every person in the room, ideally the second language speakers as well, I'd ideally like you to be able to get everyone to put their hands up. Oh, yeah, I understood. It's about a guy who, all right? Uh, uh, and this is, it is useful for us all to be reminded when in, in, in any repertoire that you're singing, there will always be someone for whom it is the first time, and it is to, to them that you sing. So now you understand why yeah. I cut you off when you're just no, about to explain. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if, you, if before you get into this room, the number one job is to make sure you've got it technically correct, you've got it memorized, you've got it musically sorted and everything, if that's the number one job, once you get onto this stage, the job parameter changes. Now the number one job is to communicate an idea, whatever the song might be. And in this one, clearly, it's this tale. Yeah, yeah. So uh, whatever you can do to make that, yeah. make that work. Make it actually clearer, rather. Yeah. yeah. And it's tricky. So let's, um, hang on, let's just, just think a minute which order I want to do this. OK, before we take that, can I just examine one thing with the way you sing in piano? Yes. Now, the way you sing big, there's no problem with that at all. With one thing, I'll come to that at the end as well, so just remind me something up there and so on. Let's get a piano bit. He answered peace. Can you go to just... He answered... It starts very low, but nonetheless. Can you just do that bit together for me a second, please? He answered peace and called her up at last before me. I won't make you sing that again. And, 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 and it got, got louder before I had a chance to calibrate. So let me just. Um, what about even that? Yes, yeah, still less than me. Do you mind if I just yeah, have yeah. a listen and go, go to the back again? You can already see what's in my mind. I'm just checking yeah. to what extent your voice carries as you sing piano. And you already, you're just giving a little bit more. So it's not about volume, it's about projection. Yeah. Sli slightly different things. So still less than me, and I'm just going to have a little wonder if you don't mind. Well done. Okay, that's good. When you performed it through, a lot of the pianos to my ears on the front row there began to disappear. I could hear the text. I could hear you. I could hear you to a certain extent. But I'm just thinking there's a, a certain um, focus, mm -hmm. certain intensity as you sing quietly to just make sure that the solid kernel of your sound, kernel with a K that is, yes. uh, 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 remains true and re projects all the way to the back. See the guys sitting standing at the back there? You want to sing, make sure that they are getting the same concert that these people at the front are getting. Yeah. And 
I'm not sure from a technical point of view exactly how that works, simply that sometimes the intention of being heard right at the back mm. means that you, you sell everything to that chap with the cup there, that he can hear everything you say, even though it's not at all loud, but yeah. you can still make sure that he gets everything. And small tissue was not at all, but just making sure that the actual singing part of it remains all the way through, you never let go. And then, those moments in leader, song, whatever, where you really want something, a special off the voice piano for something. Then it's a different thing and it's, yeah, that's it. Exactly, yeah. all right? So, that's, the, that's, that's my one technical thing to date and I don't even know how to do it. So, you know, that's, that's why I'm not a teacher. But just no, no, hold on to the yeah, yeah. middle part of your voice, yes? And uh, for all of us to experiment with, with what is piano in our opera singing or whatever, uh, you know, if you're singing piano across the top of an orchestra, you want it piano, but it needs to carry across players as well. So let's all of us just remind ourselves how to do that and what that means. Yeah. Okay, okay, put that to one side. Um, let's just deal with the words, those words, yeah. those few words. So just come and have a look just over here. Let's just, go th let's just go through the poem, both of us just skim read and find the words that only Thomas Hardy uses. Where, where, where's that? Uh, I'm loath to stop it where it is. Great, okay, that's the first one. I didn't did meet, even miss one, uh, but I'm loath to stop it. So, okay, loath, loath, these are words that, we, yeah, 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 it's unusual. And you need to make sure that the way you sing that somehow will give the, it has the meaning. meaning of the word in it. Keep going, let's just find some more. And the phrasing of no stop was there and she waned child fair. Yeah, waned is a terrific word. Yeah. I mean, crikey, I don't <laughs> And she waned Wain child, child fair. So in the yeah. way you sing, so there's wane, and there's wane. Yeah. Wane child, there's a certain moaning quality on that word you can use just to give us an idea where we go, Oh, okay, that probably means... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right, right. Uh, keep going. Mean. Still less in mean to my great sorrow. I mean, that's just right out there. Um, still less in mean to my great sorrow. In, 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 a, in a sense, um, because to my great sorrow is so much more audible, we can grab that. Yeah. To the point that people listening are, are less worried about the meaning of the word mean. Still less in mean to my great sorrow. And they're with us on that. Okay, that's a bit of subterfuge, but yeah. yeah. Okay, keep going. Uh, my small as a verb. Yes. I love that. That's Hardy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's, uh, she, and, uh, and smalled till she was not small. So, um, you know that also the other one in um, um, Channel Firing where the Glebe cow drools? Yeah. Yes. So, drool and smalled are yeah. words which you can sing all the way through. Every single last ounce of syllable you can get out of there. Mm. And smalled she slowly. Yeah. And then we go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah, got yeah. that, yes, okay, keep going. Um, plain. Yeah, you've already, we've already got check and script, okay, there's script, nothing to yeah. do with that. We're, you sang it in a way that we understand what that, what that means. Better I plained. So then, Clearly, something in the way you sing, even the word better, I don't know, I don't well, mean that. Well, I guess the way that one sings better, if you're describing it plainly, if you can do the thing, then it, in, it explains the word before you get to it. Absolutely true, except better so short, it's not a word you can plain on very easily. In fact, what you're going to do is you're going to describe what you're about to sing. Yeah. Better, I plained. Yeah. And now the next bit is certainly going to do that for you. And the, the tricky thing is, is I planed, uh, better is in uh, uh, speech marks, I planed is out of them, so you're just reporting what you did. But nonetheless, in the way you sing the word planed, maybe an even tone, maybe a slight whine in that, might help you, non vibrato as it were, yeah. to put across what you're about to sing about as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. That'll help, okay. Um. Is that about it? Yeah, I'm marring your dangers in every day is what it, it reads. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. It was your choice to mar the undoing. Yeah, exactly. Great. Okay. So that helps. When we're singing any word, any word, uh, as we start it, the audience hears the first syllable, if there is one, the first consonant, and then a long vowel. 
at which point that word could be one of 20 or something like that. It is only when you put a diff song in, if there is one, or when you put the final consonant, if there is one, that we understand what that word is. Other, otherwise, is, it could be anything, yes? And the thing about in singing is because you do it so slowly, uh, that process, you can see, what, you see how it works. We guess a lot, particularly if it's our own language, and if it's not, we're in trouble, but if it's our own language, we can guess. So if I say I'm going to say this very slow, you know what's coming next. Yep. Okay? But nonetheless, when we get to words that are unusual like that, then you just have to spend time and help us through. Yes. And in doing so, it means that you get a much better idea of what they mean yourself, yeah? Okay. Now, I don't need you to do that. We'll, do, we'll maybe get to that in context, but that's just that. Yeah. yeah? Right. Now, we get a chance once again to play with this song. I have a feeling I might have, someone might have sung this song to me on this very platform before. And it strikes me that what I did with him then, I'd love to do with you now, so apologies, apologies to anybody who saw this before, but it's basically the same as the um, uh, Die Löwen, perhaps, as well, is analysing who, who's in the story. Just list them off for me. Uh, the speaker, the spirit, and the, the dead loved one. Great. The speaker, the spirit, the dead loved, loved one. So the speaker's, he's got two roles. He's both reporting what happened, and he's also in there. So in this case, the narrator and the protagonist are one and the same person. So he's got his own feelings about how that felt. That's very good. So you can characterise each one of them. You can choose and play and choose different things. Let me tease one out of you, which you can choose to reject over time and play with in the future. Fate, the guy, clock of the year. Give me, cast him for me from your knowledge of TV or film actors. Who would you use to portray the clock of the year? Alan Rickman, great choice, fantastic. I feel like he popped into my mind earlier on. Now, you've, you've, you've bought Alan Rickman at great expense for this, so what would he bring to the party that other people wouldn't do? You know that he will, you will say, Alan, I want you to do it in this way, okay? We're going to set, here's your lines, I want you to do it this way, and then he will do it like that, but add more. What would he add? Uh, I think it's a particular Rickman-esque capacity for disdain. Ah, yes. And Yes. There's no negotiation. It's well, you can have this, take it or leave it, and then and you get what you get. This is utterly and completely beautiful. Uh, if you get a chance to, to see this video back, mm. compare what you've just described with how you performed the guy when he came up, and you will see the word sneer might come to your mind, okay, when you see what you did earlier on. Yeah. But now you get a chance to replace that which we will all have seen when any baritone has sung this song before, they'll say, and the clock of the year said, no, I'm not going to do that, no, and all this of stuff. <laughs> but Alan Rickman wouldn't do it that way. He would do it in the way you've just described. You've already got a mental image in how Alan Rickman might just play. Well, as you say, I can do this, but on your own head be it. Mm. Can we do the first page, please? And let's show, let, show us your Alan Rickman. All right, so you're already trying some new things. Uh, you so it's marked forte at the beginning, and the spirit said, and then you said, what would it be if I, didn't, if I wasn't forte here? Okay, then uh, that's not what Finzi has written. You can play, yeah, you yeah, make sure it doesn't become too quiet, yeah. but the character of what you did is very interesting. Well, 
I can make the clock of the years go backward. You know, and, 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 and at this point, why wouldn't you say, yeah, I agree to that, proceed. Um, when you get to, and I cried, agree to that. What I also liked is when you said a spirit passed before my face, I saw still the young, vulnerable man you were beforehand. All of us, in other words. You know, I, I said, agree to that. And I said, agree to that, quaver and a half rest, proceed. So you, you give him the cue for that. And I cried, agree to that, proceed. There's a bit more space there. Agree to that. Proceed. Come on, then. And then you say something that gives us the only clue as to why it's so important to you. I mean, it's, I mean, it's hardly even a clue yet, but you just say, it's better than dead. And, and, and in that half line comes a, a bit of attitude that reveals something about you, the, 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 the guy, the narrator. Yeah. It's, oh, better than dead. Well, well, why is that? What happened to you? Tell us more, Okay. There's something away about the way you sing, it's better than dead, even though it's so low that he comes back to you. He says, Speak. Yeah, so in order to be, yeah, 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 exactly. Hey, 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 chill, chill. Agree to that, proceed. It's better than dead. He answered, Peace. Yeah. And called her up. You know, you young ones, you're all the same. And he's also thinking, This is going to be easy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, all right. Um, and similarly, and I cried, cease. Thus far is good. Yeah. It is enough. Small, disjointed sentences. It is enough. Let her be thus always. Uh, now, the, if you can just give each one of those their space, then those people who are hearing this for the first time will, will utterly understand the situation. Yeah. Okay? So now, let's try it. We'll we won't go as far as but alas for me. Let's just do the first two um, uh, 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 pages. Just play again with these two characters, see how different you can make them, and just ask yourself at each turn, well, I did it like this last time, so what happens if I do it differently? Yeah. Here we go. A spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. And the spirit said, I can make go backward, but I'm loath to stop it where you will. And I cried, agree to that, proceed, it's better than dead. He answered, peace, and called her up, as last before me. pause just there. That's great. Fun type of stuff. Again, you, you get the freedom to play. This is what these sessions are all about for me. It's a, because when you, you come, when you come in a recital, you get one go at every song, hopefully. <laughs> they just have to restart. But you get one go, yeah? Mm. But in a session like this, and you get the chance to, to, to tease it out a bit more. Yeah. In a sense, of course, if you sing this song throughout your, uh, your performing life, you will get the chance to work on it and do different things. And as you grow older, you think, oh, what about this choice or that choice? But let's start that process here. That's, that's what today's all about. So good stuff from here. Um, I said something to put up on the top there about the loud singing. Mm. Just when you sung softly there, I had a piece and a quarter up as last before me. That, that was knife-edge stuff about whether I was going to hear it or not. So let me just remind you yeah. about that, just to keep it glowing all the way through. And then, when it, gets to the, when it gets to the climax, here's my advice. Simply that, when it gets loud and big, both ends of the song, both parts of the song, what would happen if you gave about 60% of what you're doing now? So that you still fill the room. There's no problem with that. But it costs you less effort. Less effort. Yeah. 
the hope being that when you are booked by Scrapped Upon Sea Music Society to do this in concert, the full cycle, which is half an hour, with something else in the first half, 40 minutes, you know. Exactly. Oh dear. So, um, so it is that you can you can have exactly the same effect, but try less. Mm. So this, switch off everything about meaning now, whatever. Just give me. Um, can we go from then young, then, uh, young, then uh, younger, 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 whatever? I can't even. I don't know this song. Uh, it, ju just uh, try this. When it gets to the climax, just see what happens. Uh, I don't want it to be that you just chill out on it. That's not what I mean at all. But just see if you can get the same effect, just work less. Hmm. Ex ex play, see. <laughs> What did you feel? Yeah, good. I mean, I think it's giving it more, yeah, obviously more ease and just a bit more room to breathe. Yeah? Yeah. And it feels like it can, it can carry through a bit more, well, there's just more of an option, I suppose. So you're giving yourself more choice. I love more of an option. That is, a, yeah, uh, it, it, that's great. That, I'd hold on to it particularly. So that um, the feeling you had when you were doing it beforehand, it come, thinking much more about character, uh, that's great, and then accessing that emotional response I've been talking about most of this afternoon, that can sometimes, if you're not ready for it, lead you to sing with everything you've got. Because, oh my God, I feel so amazing, this Schubert song, ah! And, th and they lose total control, okay? So what you do in the practice room is work out the, this, the discipline side of it, what it's like to sing with a bit less. And then, in marrying the two, you get the effect you're after, but just with a bit less complete force. Yeah. Now, people in the audience, uh, given that you, you could see he wasn't necessarily throwing himself into it physically from a dramatic point of view, but did that sound any less than when he sang it before, particularly? It's the same, it, it, it sounded forceful enough, filled the room, yeah. okay? People are happy with that. Mm. So from which we learn, okay, I don't need to blast away. And so it is, could we just flip to the very end, and I'd probably better leave you, at the very end of the song. So give him that, and coldly his voice. Now, just to say to you, when you sing and coldly his voice, you're simply reporting. You don't need to be cold, or you don't need to be in character yet. Just and coldly his voice. Let's just do those two lines to the end. And again, when you mar the ordained, just think 55%. See what happens. Feel? Yeah, it felt much more. I felt like I was able to get much more of a, a balance on it. I think. Great. You, you, in a pra large practice room like this, you can experiment with less and less, mm. and seeing if it still rattles. Get, get a friend to stand on the side of the room and just say, you know, is that am I singing too quietly now? And you will you will judge where that point is. But the thing is, the more focus you get on that, and the more easy, almost like singing legato, basically, but just pure basic singing, the more you can find that thread that just really hits the room, then the less effort you put into it. Mm. Then, what I love about what you said earlier on, you have all the options. You could sing that with a smile on your face. Yeah. It's your choice to mar the day. Sunshine. You know. Mm. It, then you have all sorts of options rather than yeah, volcanic full throttle. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to let you go. Thank you so much. Thank Brilliant. You. Great stuff. Hello, I'm Sam, and this is Aaron, as you've already met. Uh, and we're going to do 
you in a churchyard by Finzi, the same cycle as Tyler did something. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Oh, now, um, yes, <laughs> let's get that out of the way. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, careful with this song. Yeah. The tessitura is very low and it's doubled at the octave down by the piano. Yeah. Your voice is, is spinning to my ear much higher okay. than this song. And obviously with the, with the rest of the cycle, there'll be ones that's, that just sit <laughs> maybe it's a third higher. It's not far, but it's just it, it, a lot of the stuff is going to be gravel. It's going to be a bit gravelly for you, okay, sure. and when we get to those bits, I don't want you to feel you have to dig for them. No, okay. So we will maybe have a little look at that. Maybe right. see if it's a balance thing, or just see if, see what we can find. Okay. Now here though is something that that is an ask the audience question, okay. right? Uh, who put up your hand if you heard between eighty to one hundred percent of all his words? Okay, 60 to 80, 60 to 80, roughly 68% you got of his text, right? 40 to 60? 
Right, okay. Anybody prepared to put their hand up for under 40% of the words? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, do you know them? No, no, anyway. <laughs> That's worth a beer afterwards. Acquainted. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I was just being honest, honey. Okay, so, um, okay, so there's a thing. Even before we get to the famous hardy words that are difficult cells, oh, yeah. see previous songs, even before we get there, there are many words, and I, and I know this song pretty well, and I just got lost, a okay. bit lost. I thought, oh, oh, what's that? So I want, because it's singing in English, I want to spend a bit of time working on how we can make that clearer. Yes. I don't want anybody to feel that the singing of any, any language is semaphore for the hard of hearing, okay? So we don't have to enunciate so much, we can't sing legato or okay, whatever, sure. all right? Yeah, it's not that. Right. But let's go, let's take, let's just set him up for the first, the, the first phrase, if you will. Let's just, can I just hear a little bit of them on? I'll just get in close then. It is sad that so many Okay, let's just pause there. Now that's not so bad. I think I got nearly everything. I enough to make sense of it, and therefore being an English speaker to guess anything I missed out. Okay. The word whom, for example, it's very quick. Yeah. And, I'm, and I wouldn't even uh, 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 advise you to put the whispered H at the beginning of it. Okay. Uh, uh, there might be a, a different circumstance or a longer note up higher somewhere okay. where you could sell us a lovely whom. This is not one of those cases, so it's going to be there. But it needs to have the M on the end and an audible M just in passing. I'm a bit worried. You've, you've, so, you've sold me so well, soud, okay. because that's such an unusual word. I would go for side or something like that, and then I'm not obviously hardy. But then the U, the whole point about it being in the churchyard is that, is that this is a U tree. And as you sing it to people, if you don't get a chance, if they've not read in a churchyard the title sure. and just throw them in it, it becomes clear that someone is speaking to them. But you could be spelled E W E. Yes. So, yeah. so quite a different song. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So it, it, it sound is, yeah, yeah, we're going to have to deal with that. Sound the you. But there's something in the way that you set up the word you that will, yeah. will register in our minds. We'll deal with it as you deal the next bit. You, he said you. Saud the you, not Y-O-U either. Saud the you. Mm -hmm. And then once you talk, start talking about roots, mm -hmm. which you do with a rolled R, okay. but I still missed the import of that word. We'll get there okay. uh, uh, for some reason. We'll get there. But it, we'll, we'll, only then do we understand, oh, it's a yew tree. Yeah. And he's underground. Oh, I see. Can you see how long that is a set? How long you've got to, we've all got to wait until we begin to understand the context of this song, where it's set. Yeah. So remember that anything that's to do with in the earth, underground, roots and trees, throughout the first half of the poem will really help us to get ourselves centred right. in. Okay? Yeah. Same from the top, same from the top, if you would. It is sad that so many Good. That's well done again. Now, that's very. This is really tricky because the, the two things that are competing here are singing legato and uh, making sure that the words are intelligible, which is generally speaking more the job of the consonants than the vowels, it seems to me. If you had distorted vowels because you were trying to make it sound Italianate and doing that, then we, that, that's a different subject. Yeah, but you're not doing that. That's fine. So it's simply consonants. How you do it? As you sing misjudge, it may well be that you give us a, a little dummy syllable beforehand. Misjudge, misjudge. So you want to emphasize the long M, but you don't want to get that upbeat thing. Misjudge, misjudge. Ooh, I don't know, that's difficult. Misjudge, misjudge. And then there's something about the length of the word judge. Misjudge, misjudge the. You could put the J. 
a little bit earlier. And then you actually, what I did just then was create an extra note almost for it. Did you yes. hear? Yes. Misjudge the world. Yes. The misjudge the... I don't know. Okay. okay. Let's reset from the top again just to have a little thing. There we go. So the J of misjudge, you just, it, was, it just yeah. got lost in the mix. Okay. Misjudge their lot. And then the T of lot. Misjudge their lot. Hmm. So that was quite an ex a, 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 a pose of T for me. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then I, guess, as then I say again, I'm going to try and sing legato, okay. but I'm also going to try and make sure that T comes in, which is going to disrupt that. Okay. The two warring things. Okay. It is sad that so many of worth still in the flesh. And, and, and it's a great way to, way to just describe the living, yes. people who are alive. They're still in the flesh. This is very hardy, yes. but also sort of, you know, old, you know those, those old patriarchs with the, oh, with yeah. the beards that go like this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it is sad that so many are still in the flesh. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. So, there's something about the word still, there's something about the choice of the word flesh that gives this yew tree its rather stern character, yeah. which you can grab along the way. Yes. Yeah? Reset, same, same sentence. It is sad that so many of still ah, I'm sorry, I'm going to stop you there because, yeah, the th of worth. Yeah. This is a, a good... It, it, Get the TH in, we'll understand that worth, okay. as, imp as opposed to W-E-R-E. -E. Okay. And also, um, so many of worth. So the yew tree has looked up at the living mm -hmm. and said, he's of worth, she's of worth, not him. No, waste of time, waste of time, waste of skin, waste of skin. Okay? Yeah. It's sad that so many of worth still in the flesh. Yeah. It's a rather judgmental yew tree here. Okay? <laughs> so both those things in that one word. Yeah. Reset, let's okay. go again. Just, sorry, may I press pause again? I'm not sure I heard it. The, the TH of worth. Oh, no, I, I was just oh, so, sorry, else. sorry. No, 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 no. Overloading. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Okay, that's, that, that's getting there. The D in the middle of secludes, and then, then, then the Z afterwards, just, it's, it's it, tiny. I'm talking about airbrushing. I'm not talking about anything particularly major here. But it is the difference between us having to work hard to get everything yeah, and get a sense of it, or us being able to relax and go, ah, ah, yeah. Yeah, 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 giving us an easy ride. Course, we yeah. have to work hard. And, and as I keep saying, I, as an English speaker, tie myself up in knots, vocal knots, mm. trying to be intelligible. It's not necessarily the greatest thing for a singer. Yeah. I, the payoff is that we are understood and we communicate. That's great. Yeah. But sometimes you yeah, end up thinking, oh, God, blimey. How is it that you sing, there's so many of worth still, worth still in the... Yeah. Okay. Even the M of so many. It's sad that so many of worth. It is sad that so many of worth. Sounds like a letter to the Telegraph or something. Yes. It is sad that so many of worth still in the flesh. Sowed the you. Yes. And that's a great moment for you to come out of character yes. and just sowed the you. Yes. It may well be you don't need to work so hard on sowed the you after all because yes. we're listening to the, yes. to the Telegraph letter. Okay, yes. okay here we go. Re reset. Here we go again.
Good, great. Good enough, to, good enough to move on, certainly. The S of misjudge just came out as a, mi uh, slight, a bit of a mish, misjudge. Just yeah. <laughs> well, it, it play. So you, you know what you're looking for. Come from you. So then there's a couple of bars before we come in next time. Can we pick it up from those couple of bars? Let's, get, let's keep going. Okay, let me, let me just help with that, with that sentence. I'm warming to this telegraph yes. correspondent idea. Yes. Simply because the sort of person, like my father, who writes the telegraph, loves his words. Okay. Yes. So could you translate that line for me into plain English? Oh. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's what he could have written. They walk every day. Yeah. What's wrong with they walk every day? Yeah. Basically, yeah. even nutshell, they exist. Yes, exactly. Yeah. They ride their diurnal round. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's the sort of character of this yew tree that he decides okay. to express himself in that way. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm just popping out to ride my diurnal round. I'll be back in the, you know. Okay, so given that that love of words, it's both hardy and this yew tree, okay. now your job is to make sure that we we get it from two angles. We get the character, mm -hmm. that'll help, mm -hmm. but also we get every single word. The, whether you choose to roll the R on ride or not, okay. that could be easily debated, but if you do, it'll mean we get a purchase on that word. Okay. They or we? They, they, they. Okay. Okay. They ride, they ride, yes. they ride. Give us an R that counts. They ride, they're diurnal. And put that in, to, you know, those what stay below, you know, no, that sort of. Oh, um, yeah. What's the word on it? You know, the. I, I know what you mean. Glow pen. Yeah, yeah highlighter, yeah. highlighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They ride the diurnal round. Yeah. Each. Each day stands. Oh. Yes, keep going, yes. Each day spans some of hours. Yes. Each day spans <laughs> some of hours. Yeah. Ooh, I rather yeah. like my own voice. Yeah. Okay, here I we go. <laughs> Same again, same place if you would, just give him lead, lead him. Great, that's, that's, it's really tricky. <laughs> There's something about the word ride. It's so long. Yes. What I did it earlier on when I was talking about um, consonants beginning a word, and then it, it could be anything. Yes. They ride, could be anything. Yes. We won't know until we put the aid. Sure. Aid. Okay. They ride, they die. Now, it's quite a pronounced diff bar I just sold you yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But at least you know exactly what word it is. Ride, they die. Each, C-H. Days span. Now, you could choose to put the Z at the end of days mm -hmm. as separate days okay. span. Days span. Yes. Okay. Days span some. But I've just elided them there. Yes. Yes. And it's, I'd have to, if I was dicta taking dictation of that, I would have to work out yes. that's a possessive, all oh right, so that must have an apostrophe. <laughs> Each days span some. Oh, there's no doubt where we are, okay? Is right? Can you lead him in once again, if that's all right, please? They ride their diurn around Each day span some of ours In fearless ease, without joy I, I just lost you there. I lost you there. Um, I was on four bar behind myself. No, 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 no worries at all. I just, I, I'm just, uh, the upbeats, 
they and in love them a bit more. In, what's the word, what's the adjective, in something? In peerless? In peerless. peerless. Okay, peerless, okay, we're going to have to sell that one. In peerless ease. Now there's something about ease that we might have to put a little a slight hard edge onto the front of that yeah. vowel. Peerless ease. But in the same way, you sell us the idea of ease. In peerless ease without in peerless ease, without, you see what I do there? Yes. Just give it woo, one of those, yeah? <laughs> the two R's of ride and round yes. need a bit of coaxing. Okay. Don't roll them no. necessarily okay. if that's not your thing. <laughs> Experiment with rolling them okay. to see what that feels like, yeah. then you'll really get to the word. Sure. Then. Take them out to be much more like your own singing sure. so that you can figure out what it's like, but yeah. make sure that each word sounds. Can we pick it up? Daylight sum of hours in just before that. Is there any way you can get in there? Yeah. Exactly there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, because I can stop you back to yeah. ease. Again, the singing of the word ease is going to be interesting, and it's also if you could sing through the Z part of it. Mm. Peerless ease without that'll help. Do you breathe after that? Uh, yes, that's a yes. Okay, let, in, yeah. that's a yes. So you can bring the Z in early, breathe, and then on you go. Yeah, very good. Same again, same place. Okay, I think the thing about ache, you will get the pronunciation of that through the feel of it. Okay. Could you say for me that word? Ache. Great. And now, can you imbue it? You'll just need to stretch it a bit longer. Can ache. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, again. Oh. Again. Ache. That's it. Ache. That's it, yeah. yeah. And then we understand immediately, even though I've never heard that word before. Okay. Ache. Ache. Sure. Ache. Great, okay, so let's see if we can capture some of that. Uh, probably the same place, yes. is that okay? In a peer, in a peer, yeah. I don't, I'm not looking for in a peer, no, no. but in peer, in peer, just make sure you love the upbeat. Okay, okay here we go. have the choice, ache like ours. Yeah. The thing about the living, they don't understand the dead. Yeah. They don't understand that we are, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Their time will come. Yeah. But ache like ours. Yeah. If you just, if you use the K just to bounce off that, you've got a, not a glottal stop, I hesitate from using yeah. that, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like ours, the key change is going to help you also. Yeah. Whatever we felt about the yew tree up to this point, yeah. When you start speaking about the ache, then those people who ache in this audience will go, oh yeah, I know that. I can equate to that, okay? Here we go, same place if you would. I'm going to have to stop in a second, but this is just a long sentence. Yeah. If the living could but hear what is heard by my roots as they creep round the restful flock. Yeah. All are one huge long sentence. Yeah. So wherever you breathe in that, the living could but hear what is heard by my roots as they creep 
keep the sentence going. Creep around the restful flock. And, and now that's a sort of, the, and the thing said there's a nice little yes. thing, to, uh, uh, addendum to put on the end. So we need fresh energy. And the thing said there, no one would weep. Okay, yes. attitude again. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to leave it, but to sum up, in your singing of English in this song, there's a, there's a lot of care you can give to words which, because you're a native speaker, you, would, you know what they are, so you don't consider them. They just go past. You, you know what it is. But for us, the job is, 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 it, it needs to be um, so much more vital, more disciplined, so that we can get everything you say. It would, of course, be frustrating to you if in speaking to you now is just a bit rough, and you sort of... You got nice to buy, but you had to work because you can't quite, you know, and that's frustrating. Yes, yes, yes. So you do that, but yes. the singer in you is all the time calibrating what that means to sing a legato so you don't compromise the vocal part of it. Okay. And that's tricky. Yes. It just takes, takes a while. Okay. So both of those, they'll meet in the middle somewhere. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> great. Thank you very much, Eva. It's great. Thanks, Sam. And we would like to start with uh, Edward Edward by Ivor Gurney. Uh, this song is a conversation between a boy, Edward, and his mother. And it begins with her asking him why he looks so sad and why there's blood dripping from his sword.
great, Dan. Thank you very much. Good to see you again. Hi. Um, terrific. Now, this is a bit weird because I've been trying to get people to characterize and enjoy the characterization of different characters within the same song most of the afternoon. And now I feel I need to turn you down. <laughs> Um, just take that volume control, just turn it down. The thing is that you are blessed with an extremely expressive face. The way your eyebrows sit over your eyes, when you choose to, you can, you can do amazing and wonderful things. Your papagona is going to be wonderful, I can, I can see. So you, you, but with that, you need to just be wary of how you use them. Did you notice, uh, some in the middle, you did, a, you did a fantastic change on a knife edge, and as your eyes did so, someone in the audience went, <laughs> Did you, did you, were you aware? Did you hear? Yeah, did hear yeah. Okay, and you might have been thinking, hang on, that's a gory bit, don't, don't laugh, it's not, it's not funny. Or, I don't know. Mm. Part of you will, will, will realise you have that power over an audience with that face, and something you can use more and more, and uh, so particularly when it gets towards the comic side of things, Papagena and so forth, you will be able to get that response when you want it. Mm. So the thing for you to think, is, well, do I want it? Something like this. Uh, and you can feel me edging towards the no area, yeah. can't you? Yes. And so it is that um, your performance of that, the root map was that when you were Edward, you were back to the piano. When you were the mother, you took two steps forward. Were you aware you were doing that? A little bit, but not that much. Yeah. So I, I, as I watch you, the more I watch you, I think, ah, it's going to be the mother. He's going to take two steps. Oh, there he goes. Okay. So at which point, there's a part of me where the alarm bells begin to ring. And... I don't know. There's something about hand gestures. I love hand gestures. There's no, I'm not, you know, I, not suggesting we're seeing everything like this. But nonetheless, when you say, go to exile, <laughs> I think, we know where exile is. It's somewhere else. You, know, you don't need to show. Mm -hmm. So that causes me to think, well, what am I trying to say to everybody this afternoon? What, what am I trying to say? Be expressive. Be different people. But not too much. That's not so useful. All, all I think I'm trying to do is I can imagine a, 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 a sense in which a route map into this song would be to go up to the highlands, spend a bit of time up there, see the people, watch Outlander a few times, all that sort of stuff, get a feel for it, and then somehow condense that into a performance where we see all of that. We see your enjoyment of these different characters. We see the mother. We see Edward in your face. And yet it's, it somehow comes from within. Any hint of something that you put on top in some way, and that's a dodgy area because you might have felt all of that. I mean, I don't know. But any hint of something, that then I stop believing in a strange way. Do you, do you, you sure. see? Yeah. Um, and you might risk it becoming uh, comic. That's, that's where I am at the moment. So let's have a little think about that. Uh, in fact, this is a chair moment as well, if I, if I can, because, uh, uh, because I need to talk to you about the, 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 the characters in the song as well. Have a, have a seat. Um, um, so the, the story is, 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 is evident. And here's another thing. I normally say to people, don't start the song knowing the end. Here, I'm going to say the exact opposite. Start the song knowing the end. Uh, and here's why. Uh, why does Edward lie to his mother at the beginning? Um, About the, the raven and the, the hawk and the horse. I think it's because he's repressed what it is that he's done. Right. And so he, is, he kind of genuinely believes those excuses as they come to him. It's right. not like he's just being like, oh, I've killed my hawk. Yeah. Uh, 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 why doesn't the mother say, he says he's killed the hawk, why doesn't the mother say, oh, okay, you killed your hawk, bad luck. Because she knows what's happened. Ah, and now he gets to the crux. Of the, why does she keep asking him that then, if she knows what's happened? How do you know she knows what's happened? Um, because there's kind of no real line of questioning, it's just constantly digging away at him. Yeah, tell the truth, tell the truth. Tell the truth. Ah, now he gets the truth. Mm. So, therefore, when he says, I've slain my father, is that a surprise to her? No. Why not? Because she's the one that's told him to do it. And there we have the whole song beginning to end. 
both parties start the song knowing that the father has been killed on her orders. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, it's a weird kind of conversation and question answer when both know the answer. Yeah. So, what's going on? Why does he lie? <laughs> Shall I give you an answer in case? Please. I'll give you an answer and then you can mull over it and reject it. He, he's protecting her. She has, she has presumably, in a previous conversation before the song started, said, for whatever reason, you need to kill your father. We're into Macbeth territory, roughly speaking, aren't we? So she's Lady Macbeth, in a different son relationship, whatever. She said, you need to kill your father. It's the only way. You've got to do it. And when you've done it, come to me. So he comes to her, and his sword's still bloody. And she says, not, oh, you've done it then, well done. She says, why is your sword so red? This is, uh, actually, a, a terrible phrase has come to my head, and I can't use that. This is messed up, okay? She says to him, why is your sword so red? She knows why his sword is so red. And he says, he looks her straight in the eye and says, I've just killed my hawk. She says, no, you haven't. Why is your sword so red? I've just killed my horse. No, you haven't. Why is your sword so red? I've just killed my father. Okay. At that point, there's a settling of, right, okay, we've called it what it is. What are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to, I'll have to go. I'll have to leave you, mother. What about your family? Again, that word comes to mouth. I can't use that. Uh, 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 who cares, yep. basically? And then, why did you do it? because you told me to. Only at the very end of the song does she drag the truth out of him, but she knew that truth anyway, mm -hmm. so... So why is she dragging it out of him? Because she's a mother? Because she knows that on her advice she will never see her son again? She's just lost her husband? That doesn't seem to matter too much, but she's just lost her son, and, and with it the estate, the Edward estate, and everything that goes with it. So... This is deep and dark. Both of them have got all sorts of psychological stuff about why and who and, you know. Okay, so that's the first thing. Right. So now, in, let me do the same trick I did just earlier on. Let's cast it. Yeah. Go, go for the mother first. Um, someone like Maggie Smith. Caustic, because I'm not yeah. going on the, on, the, on the, you know, obviously she's such a good, uh, a deft comedian. So we're not going on someone, so, so someone caustic and old and, uh, is, that, is that fair? And they're able to say like one sentence and get someone to do something. Okay, yeah, great. Maggie Smith on the corner. Who's going to be the Edward? Some sort of milk shop. No, 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 it's very interesting. Milk Sop, I've not seen that song in the song in that light, but let's run with it for a, for a, for a moment until I cut you down. Let's run with it for a, mo a moment. Why Milk Sop? Tell, tell me more. Because he's just fussy in her hands. And although she, it's because she enjoys manipulating, she's kind of got that sadistic streak, he's not really done very much to stand up to her up until the very end of the song. Mm -hmm. uh, just flip back to Macbeth a moment. Is, do you, Macbeth is manipulated by Lady Macbeth into killing the king. Do you see Macbeth as a milksop? No. So you could see Macbeth as a quite a powerful uh, Highland chieftain who is nonetheless manipulated to do a terrible thing. Will you, will you excuse me if I suggest that Edward could be the same? Just, just to say. Um, the, the, I have no idea why she has required this. It could be that she was molested by his clan in the past and that this is her ultimate. She's planned all these years to marry Edward's father so she can get close to kill him. Uh, goodness knows. <laughs> but she's got, some, uh, she's got some reason to do this. She can't do it herself, so she gets her son to do it, which is already a bit weird, okay? Uh, now, I just have to say, in my mind, I just see burly Scottish guys in kilts with, with the big swords, the double-handed numbers, okay? So when he comes, uh, and, you know, and, and, and rain and stone walls and castles and, and steeds and hawks. And uh, the idea, 
of the, of the Scotters are milk soap. I'm just not sure they have them there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I see it very burly, actually. Big guy, and he comes. And, and the reason that that's interesting for me is that when, he, when the mother questions him, rather than going, oh, I don't know, I just killed my hawk. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a guy for, the, for whom the killing of a hawk, his favorite hawk, off with the head, doesn't even think about it. His horse, you know, he could, he could do that. And so he has done with his father. So we're talking powerful. So when he looks her in the eye and says, I've slain my hawk, you know I'm lying, but let's just say I've slain my hawk for now. And then, and then she says, she starts needling. Okay, so the whole thing, the, uh, could you please just play the, from the top? We don't need to sing it. Let's just have a little listen to the music. get a sort of martial power. Bum, 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 bum. I can almost hear the sort of B-movie um, um, uh, 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 castles and swords and sand, no, not sandals, but you know, castles and swords and armor and stuff like that. I feel it much heavier, okay? Both of them. So Maggie Smith's going to have to put on a few pounds, just to say, because she's one of those, you know, <laughs> she's wrapped in the whole tartan thing and, 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 and against the weather. It's quite bleak yeah. up with her. <laughs> you see, can I give you that to play with, just as an idea? Let's try a couple of verses after I've messed with your vision of it mm -hmm. and just see okay. how that affects it. Particularly, what's going to mess with, it, mess with your version most is the idea of why he's lying and the fact that she knows he's lying and why she keeps questioning him. Yeah. Hard, huh? Because if they both know the answer, what's going on? I've just looked up at the music that you, you're doing exactly what it says. The first verse is pianissimo the, when she sings. The second when he replies is piano until it, so there's a little bit of a crescendo when it goes, it goes higher. So yes, it is quiet. But now I, I, I couldn't understand after dum, bum, ba -bum, ba -ba -bum, after that opening why he came in so quietly. And I think what it is missing is the energy of her question. Okay. So she's not going to ask him very loudly in case, in case the off here. She catches in the corridor and she see obvi obviously covered, covered in blood. So she just fixes him and asks him. This could be one of those songs where rather than necessarily working the, all of the audience see previous conversations this could be one where you fix someone or something in the room and sing straight at it with that sort of burning pianissimo intensity. Ooh, what's the first line? Why does your brand say drop with blood? Why? Your brand say drop with blood, Edward, Edward. And in the way you sing Edward, you know, perfectly clear to both of them, you know exactly why. Okay? So just see if you can burn in pianissimo. Could you set them up from the top again, please? There just before we get to Edward. Uh, it, and now I think I've got something else about the mismatch, that, that your voice is singing a pianissimo and so is the text. 
what would happen if your text came out forte and your voice pianissimo? So I'm, I'm missing the BL and the D of blood, for example, okay. which is a great word in any language. So, so just see what happens if you, if you try and put dents in the woodwork at the back there with the text, okay? <laughs> there all right okay particularly in the first verse you're, you're particularly successful you're singing through your teeth to a certain extent that's great uh, make sure it doesn't lock your jaw in particular but that's all fine but the text itself is beginning to fly and you're getting that tension there's something even about the way one stands this is me standing comfortable and this is me absolutely on edge is there any difference at all comfortable and this why does your face I drop with blood Edward Tension is a naughty word in singing. Yeah. But there's good tension. There's springy tension when something is exciting. Dum, 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 that sort of thing whereby you could, you could uh, go anywhere. Uh, drop, you know, but, but you, choose, you just bide your time. And when it comes that it stops being her and it becomes him again, then this is, this is the fun part. See how easily you can do the shift across your face without moving any other part of you. Now I'm her, now I'm him. I'm her, I'm him, okay? So that, uh, and that's, that's so much fun, yeah. all right? You don't need to shift or anything. If you ever watch um, that YouTube clip of Fisch Diskar singing Erlkönig, he does all those, those people. They do a little bit with camera shots, certainly, but, but he just switches from one to another like that. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. So yeah, th that's fun, okay? Both of them use the, each other's name twice. When she first says Edward, it's slightly higher. When she says it again, it's a bit l lower. So you think, all right, I can, and he probably does that every verse, roughly speaking. Yeah. Something similar. So that's a gift for us to say, okay, that we will pronounce the names differently. We will sing them, characterize them differently. Edward, Edward. And he does the opposite. He goes, mother, mother. He climbs out of his pram for the second one, yeah? And then he puts the lid back on. Sorry, two images there. But, uh, 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 but there's something different about that second time. Could you start right from the beginning? Just do those two verses again, please. Oh, 
good, lovely. Let me just press pause there again. Now, I've switched off a great deal of the characterization that you had uh, earlier on, and I've gone too far. So you're allowed to bring some of that back, and you'll find that. Yeah. For example, there's something... Um, he, say, he explains he's killed both his animals, and then he just, he just explains also the very last quarter of a line, what they meant to him. And, the, and Gurney gives that a little bit extra, particularly the Stooges then. He just, just comes a little bit... He just gives it a bit more suddenly. And he gives him a chance to, to, uh, to emote about it. I mean, maybe he has... Uh, in killing his father, in getting ready for exile, he's destroyed everything he has, scorched earth policy, as it were. If he can't have it, you know, the, the clan of MacLeod, whatever, he can't have it, he's not going to let anybody else have it too. So he actually has slaughtered his hawk and his horse. Who knows, whatever. But for some reason, it, it, he, he emotes about them briefly, yeah. like that. So you can grab that, and then, then the original Dan I saw beforehand can just come out of the box a little bit. And you can allow yourself a little bit of a moment before you get back to the job in hand, you see? Yeah? Um, how much opera have you done in your career so far? Uh, bits and bobs. Full role or scenes? Uh, full role is coming up. Coming up? Moment, yeah. Great. Um, it strikes me that uh, you need to play on stage a bit more to inhabit all of these. Now, that, that's a strange thing to say because you were so characterised beforehand. The thing is that if I were to, to put in a yearbook Man, mostly, man least likely to throw a punch. I would put your name down. Is that fair? <laughs> I'll punch someone once. <laughs> that's, that's, that's more than I've ever done in my life. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Because in the part of the play of being on stage is really inhabiting other people. Uh, almost to the point where you need a therapist to pull you back again after the end. This is, this is, what, this is fun, particularly at a place like this where it, it's in padded cells and what happens here stays here sort of thing. So you get a chance to be all these people and let, let rip. And so it is, if you'll excuse me, because we have shared history from, from Call's um, um, a, a, a setup where you're singing um, behind the... in stalls, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> singing in stalls. The, the, for all of us, there comes a process where you, where you let go, you throw away the surplus, and you kick down the stalls, and you say, right, now I'm an opera animal, I can do anything. I can do absolutely anything. I can be, I can be the bloodiest villain you've ever seen, or I could be the funniest Papageno, or whatever, whatever you need to cast me, because I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And some might look at you and say, well, let's not give him Edward, because you know, Edward's a Scottish chieftain, he needs to be the size of a tank, sort of thing. And then you show them you're Edward, and they see a Scottish chieftain the size of a tank. That's what we're after, okay? Uh, so, uh, you can have fun over the next few years with these opera roles you do. Just, just let yourself go in these characters, these people. Uh, uh, um, uh, and, and that will just make your song singing um, even more vivid. Mm -hmm. And again, I just come back to it because, because it's a, it is still, I just wanted to, to, to finish by saying it is still a strangeness that you were... You were completely vivid in your first performance of it and yet I've chosen to try and shrink that in some way but I think what I'm after is internalizing it does, did, did any of that compute yeah sure given you're doing something very naturally and I'm resisting it in some way and asking you to do it or is it more like sort of refinement is that what it is? yes to it to a certain extent it's like the internalization that I do what I just did which is just yeah, but even then, that's a good place to start, because whatever happens when you can't stand still any longer is true. Sure. Yeah, and then we watching you believe it. But anything, and I'm reminded of my days at the Guildhall when Mark Shanahan, the coach there, in order to get the core scholar out of me, when I sang an R, he used to push me around the room, and just, just, just you know, actually manhandle me around the room, so, so that I could disengage that part of me that wanted to make sure the notes are correct and what have you, and the characterization is good. So once he had found a way to cut that off, then whatever was left was animal, instinctive, and honest in some way. Yeah? yeah? Uh, so uh, run with that ball and, and send the bill <laughs> for the damage. <laughs> but it'd be very interesting to see your journey through that. Uh, yeah. okay. All right, let me get, let you go. Thank you so much. <laughs>
both very much. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Thank you.